The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part 2 are very unusual in video game terms because they don't have boss fights in the traditional sense. Most combat encounters in the game are optional, leaving it to the player whether and how to tackle the enemies in the area. Even where the combat is necessary, because all of the enemies must be taken out to progress or the player must hold out for a specific amount of time, this is simply more traditional action-adventure gameplay, albeit made more frantic and stress-inducing by Naughty Dog's game design. There are just two boss fight encounters in the first game. The second game has seven bosses in total, although that number might fluctuate depending on different players' definitions of what constitutes a boss fight. Those numbers handily add up to ten, allowing me to make this video where I rank them all. These rankings are entirely subjective and based on multiple factors. I'm looking at how difficult they are, how fun they are, and how impactful they are to the story, and from that, trying to use those judgments to arbitrarily list them from 10 to 1. If you have different opinions on the list as a whole, or any individual boss fights, then let me know in the comments. Number 10. Seraphite Brute Woman Are you wearing my backpack? This is your first introduction to one-on-one -on -one melee fights that we'll see more of later in the game, so it's effectively a tutorial boss in that sense. The only real difficulty is dodging for the right number of hammer swings. Too few and you take a hard hit. Too many and you lose your attack window. Beyond that, compared to a male counterpart at the end of Haven, or to Abby at the end of the game, he goes down easy. Number 9. Abby <laughs> This fight is not even slightly fun. It's harrowing, drawn out, brutal, and intentionally so. Much as Ellie's obsession has pushed her beyond reason until she pulls herself from the brink at the very last moment, though the fight is exhausting and pushes you to wish all the way through that it would end soon. Despite that, the importance to the story and the impact means it resonates more than the brute woman. Number 8. High School Bloater Our first introduction to bloaters, as one barges into the high school gym, is iconic for the series. Once you know what you're doing, this fight isn't too hard. On higher difficulties, that changes due to the impact of the acid spores, or if you can dodge them, then spawning runners serve as useful ammo drops, and this creature goes down relatively quickly if you go for its legs, or use bombs and molotovs. Still fun, and always worth revisiting. Number 7. Mill Bloater This bloater, at the end of the combat section with David as Ellie's ally, is arguably the easiest to take down as the game gives you enough molotovs and bombs to do so without bullets if you do it right. But it does come at the end of one of the most hard fought wave combat scenarios in either game, especially on higher difficulties. That can land you in trouble if you misuse your resources, and is very intense and stressful in itself. Number 6. Hotel Bloater As long as you keep moving, this is possibly the easiest bloater to take on, as Joel both does a lot of the work and serves as the focus for the enemy's attacks. There's enough ammo there for you to ensure you can do damage, and the second game's dodge mechanics make combat as the younger Ellie feel far smoother. Important to the story both in showing Joel's dedication to Ellie as he saves her, and as a contrast to the subsequent moments where she again questions her worth if not to die for the cure. Number 5. David the stealth battle with David is easily one of the hardest bosses in the two games, especially on higher difficulties where listen mode is unavailable. Even with listen mode, you only get small windows where this serves you well, as otherwise David moves very quietly and very fast. This part is a great example of very human horror in the story, and also feeds into one of the most poignant moments of the first game as Ellie demonstrates both her strength and resolve, and, afterwards, her vulnerability. Number 4. Ellie Don't you fucking run! <laughs> Much like the fight against David as Ellie in part 1, part 2's fight against Ellie as Abby is a test of your stealth skills. The higher up the difficulty scale, this is much harder, not just for the lack of listen mode, but because of the narrowing margin of error. If you miss time it, Ellie will not only spot you coming, but dodge, throwing projectiles and pretty instantly kill you. You have to be very careful how you play this. Number 3. Seraphite Brute Man Damn you! This guy is terrifying. As a boss, he's trickier than his earlier female counterpart, but not the most difficult thing you face in Haven, let alone in the whole game. However, the fanatical determination he shows to inflict damage on behalf of his cult, even with half his jaw hanging off, even with an arrow in his shoulder, never once begging for mercy or resigning to defeat as others of his group do, is scary. If nothing else brings home to you the horror of religious fanaticism and how it can lead people to do horrible things, then this guy's relentlessness should. Number 2. The Rat King <laughs> It was tempting to automatically push this fight to number 1. Like a monster straight out of Resident Evil, the Rat King is a creature we haven't seen before in the series. A true body horror nightmare made flesh. The first time you experience this moment, it's genuinely shocking. The difficulty lies in keeping your distance from the enemy, navigating what at first is a very narrow space, connected by tight gaps, and giving yourself space to collect resources and craft on the fly if necessary, all in the dark. Removing this boss does no damage at all to the story, yet it gets the blood pumping and it's great fun. Number 1. Arcade Bloater 
A fun fight, but very tough, especially on higher difficulty. Keeping moving is essential, as is taking out runners quickly. Like the original high school blow to those runners serve as ammo drops, but you have no allies here, making speed, distance, and decisiveness essential. What pushes this to number one is the fact that for the horror and challenge that the racking offers, the bloaters charge and respawning runners give you less room to breathe, making you feel more intense, whilst being daylight rather than darkness serves to give this intensity an action rather than a horror feel, which works with the moment. There you have it. As I've said, this list is entirely subjective, both in terms of where the fights come in the ranking and in some cases whether they class as a boss fight. I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments if you'd rank any of these fights differently in terms of their difficulty, how fun they are, or their impact on the story. Tell me as well if you have any fights that you consider bosses that I've missed, or any fights I've put here that you don't consider bosses, and why. If you've enjoyed this video, then give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. Like the video that just popped up which YouTube thinks you should watch next. Check out the link in the description to my Patreon to support the channel directly and get perks like shoutouts and early access to videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.